everyone, Rebecca Elliott here. Wanted to touch base with you and follow up on some of the things that I promised to do, uh, uh, which is I want to start sharing some information uh, that I think will be helpful to you about the essential oils um, and uh, let you start uh, taking this into the, to your own uh, library of thought and uh, enjoy it as you are using the oils yourself. So I wanted to touch on uh, what are essential oils. And um, this is my first time to do a Facebook Live, so if there are technical glitches, please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is all new to me, so, uh, but having fun stretching myself because I have such a passion to share about the essential oils. Um, so I uh, invite everybody to join uh, if they can, and if not, enjoy the, uh, the video recording of it. Uh, but I want to just start with the basics, the fundamental information about essential oils so that you have this to build upon. So what are essential oils? Essential oils are the most powerful part of the plant, the life essence of the plant, the, the part of the plant that helps it grow and flourish, fight off things that want to hurt it and cause it harm, etc. cetera. Uh, the essential oils come from, uh, they're distilled from everything from shrubs to flowers to trees to roots to the leaves of the of plants and trees to bushes, uh, the fruit rinds, the resins, and the herbs. And they consist of more than a hundred different natural organic compounds, and to, which is, is amazing with all the benefits and the properties that uh, these compounds hold. In humans, they provide support to every system in our body, from our skeletal system, our muscular system, our, car our circulatory system, our endocrine system, our hormone system, respiratory system, and immune system. They support our brain health. Um, they help us with uh, having maintaining a healthy weight. Uh, they're used uh, extensively for uh, supporting our emotions and balancing our emotions and supporting our uh, spiritual uh, time when we're in our prayer part of our life. Um, they're used uh, as diffuser, uh, which can be used to help soothe a child when he's having a tough time or just a bad moment. Um, it's also very calming uh, for when we're having a stressful day as adults. And it's also extremely helpful to our pets. I really look forward to sharing with you about the essential oils and the pets. That's a favorite topic of mine, along with oils of ancient scripture, uh, some of my favorite topics. But uh, I do want to go into uh, all the ways that you can start using the oils. But most importantly, one of them is starting to detox your home so that they can be, uh, they are definitely a much better alternative than the chemical laden uh, cleaner, uh, household cleaners that you have in your homes today if you still are using uh, store-bought products. Um, you can replace them one by one with an all-natural uh, oil-infused cleaner and you can do this uh, to purify your lifestyle, to have a purer lifestyle and you can certainly do it without breaking the bank. So a great, great helpful step one in starting to incorporate essential oils uh, and using oils instead of chemicals in your in your everyday life. There are about 300 oils on earth. Uh, you need about 10 to 20 in your kind of your essential core foundational toolkit, as I call it, um, to have a good uh, foundational collection. You don't need uh, to be an aromatherapist to use the oils. Um, you just need to follow the instructions that come with them in the bottles and other reference materials that you may have. Uh, so that you know how to use them with confidence and to use them correctly. In most cases, you just rub it on, <laughs> on your skin, and that's it. Sometimes you need a little bit of uh, dilution uh, with a carrier oil, and I'll talk about that at a, in another segment. Um, but there's, there's three main ways that you use essential oils. You can use them aromatically, which I've mentioned on the diffusers, uh, to help just have calming, soothing moments, and it's wonderful great way to sleep extra nice uh, with a diffuser going with your favorite oils in it. Same for your children as well. Um, topically, you can just rub it on your skin. Again, uh, just be aware of uh, what oils might need a little bit of dilution with some uh, carrier oil to go with them. And that's a fatty type of oil like coconut oil or olive oil, something like that. 
Um, and again, I'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, and then the, th the third way is internally. Uh, so there are, those are the three ways that you can use them. Uh, for internal use, uh, you want to be sure uh, that you're using uh, oils that are uh, identified as being okay for internal use and that are GRAS, G-R-A-S, generally, generally regarded as safe. It's very important to know if you're using them internally. So just a sidebar there. Um, but there are three schools of thought and they don't agree with each other. So I want to mention uh, each of the three schools of thought of how you use oils, just so you have this again as kind of in your pocket information so that when you hear references uh, that you know, the, the, again, the thinking be behind each of the three schools of thought. So we'll start with the English. For the English, they apply it topically. They like to rub it on their skin. They don't use it aromatically and they don't uh, typically use it internally. Uh, the French, on the other hand, use it internally and also um, like to diffuse it. So uh, they ingest and cook uh, with the, the oils. Um, the Germans, they diffuse and inhale, but they don't use it internally. So there are all different ways um, to use the oils. Just really know the sourcing that your oils came from, how the plants have been treated, what the soil was like, and how they were, the plants were raised and harvested, etc. that is, make up the life essence essential oil that you um, are considering using either in any of the ways that you can, diffusing topically or aromatically. Um, so I want to just touch on that, uh, but I do want to mention that the diffusing and the inhaling can be the fastest way to um, get oils um, uh, working internally uh, is because they don't have to go through your digestive system. Uh, so they, they get in, uh, in, your, in your systems, your organs, your limbic brain uh, much, much faster. And in fact, um, tests have shown that oils reach the heart, the liver, the thyroid in three seconds when used um, aromatically. And they're found in the bloodstream in 26 seconds when applied topically. So you can see the difference there. Um, there is no wrong way of the three ways. Uh, it's just uh, what works mo best for, that, for the moment that you're wanting to use them and what your preferences are. Expulsion of the essential oils take about three to six hours for a normal healthy body. Uh, so they do stay within us for quite a long time. And they're very tiny micromolecules. So that's part again, and when we apply them topically and aromatically, why uh, they uh, circulate in our body so quickly. Um, let me talk a little bit about the history of the oils. Um, they were used, first mentioned in the first book of the Bible in Genesis, uh, referenced when Joseph was sold to slave traders um, who carried uh, spice, balm, and myrrh. And then also Genesis ends in the burial of Joseph's father when he was anointed in myrrh, and a lot of it at that. Um, oils are mentioned 1,100 times directly and indirectly in the Bible and in Scripture. Some of the oldest cultures on earth have used essential oils uh, since ancient Scripture times. The Babylonians, they placed orders for cedar wood, myrrh, and cypress. Uh, the Egyptians used essential oils for beauty and embalming purposes, and they have the oldest recorded uh, deodorant recipe <laughs> made with essential oils. And I have some recipes for essential oils uh, for uh, deodorants if, uh, if you have any interest uh, in, in giving those a try. Um, Pakistan and Rome used essential oils in communal bathhouses, and they were even used on Christ. Uh, when Jesus, of course, at his birth, he was given gold, frankincense, and myrrh by the three wise men. Frankincense is sometimes referenced as the coconut oil of essential oils. I did not, I had not ever heard that term for frankincense, although I knew it had just myriad uses, but uh, it makes sense when you have 10,000 uses uh, for the frankincense oil. Essential oils were used in medieval, by the medieval Europeans, and they brought them back um, during the Crusades, in that case, in their time. Uh, and then it was only after World War II that uh, essential oils were kind of rediscovered, if you want to call it that, um, and that the science on them has just continued to grow every single year since then. 
and they're just amazing to use so if uh, if you are using them some of the most important things and I will touch on this in more detail later uh, it's definitely knowing the sourcing of the oils and making sure that they have not been adulterated in any way whatsoever uh, there's definitely um, challenges with the essential oils um, if they are not 100% pure therapeutic grade and that definitely would limit how you would ever want to use them um, if you do not have the 100% pure therapeutic grade so that's definitely the way to go with essential oils but I'll touch on some of the details of that uh, in future uh, upcoming uh, little series here that I'm doing of my video messages I hope this was helpful and I look forward to sharing more with you of the essential oils um, as we go through the week. Uh, meantime, I hope you had a great day today and you're enjoying an evening with your family and uh, look forward to sharing with you more in the coming days. Bye.